I'm Dr. Prince Bewa from the Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology Department of the University of Cambridge, UK. The title of my talk is Insight into the Impact of Compaction Process Variations on Tablet Disintegration by Non-Destructive Atline Tarahes Porosity Sensing. I'll give you some motivation around the method and then show you some results based on some materials we've prepared and measured and then finalize it. Over the years, in vitro dissolution and disintegration testing methods have been used in the pharmaceutical industry as a benchmark for the evaluation of the quality of pharmaceutical tablets. These methods are quite limited in that they are time-consuming, destructive, and for that matter, very few samples are selected and tested. So that is why we need a method that can give a fast measurement in a non-destructive manner. So scientists have developed and adopted several of these methods. However, most of these methods give results based on a time stamp, meaning we only have average results within a certain given time. So we don't have access to the results for the individual tablets. We have developed a method based on Tarahes transmission measurements, which can accurately predict dissolution and disintegration of pharmaceutical tablets. This method is very fast and it is non-destructive and we are able to measure the individual tablets. And at the end of the day, we have a whole distribution of the tablets and hence we can track possible outliers within a batch. What do we do with these methods? We basically measure the porosity of the tablets and it is a known fact that, for example, for immediate release tablets, porosity is a critical parameter that drives the disintegration and dissolution properties of tablets. I'll talk a bit about this Tarahes radiation. It is basically an electromagnetic radiation that is sandwiched between the microwave and the infrared. And here we are talking about frequency range of 0 0.1 to about 10 terahertz. Three of the most important properties of this radiation that makes it useful for testing pharmaceutical tablets are low scattering. Low scattering because by comparing the longer wavelengths of this radiation to the typical size of particles in a pharmaceutical powder, scattering effect is very low. It is non-ionizing and also a lot of these pharmaceutical powders especially excipients, are transparent in this region. So we send a terahertz pulse through the tablet, and then we detect the transmitted pulse. And by detecting the transmitted pulse, we are able to measure the refractive index, and hence the porosity, in a very fast manner. We don't need any chemometric analysis, since we are directly measuring the porosity. And then we don't need any sample preparation. We've developed an outline sensor whereby we are able to measure a lot of tablets within a shorter time. So as you can see, this is the outline sensor and this was displayed during the last year's IFPAC meeting. And what happens there? So the outline sensor are basically composed of a rotary disk. We load the tablet here and then the, this disk rotates and then position the tablet in front of a laser gauge. And this laser gauge accurately measure the thickness. And from there, it positions the tablet in front of the terahertz pulse, and then the porosity is measured. When fully automated, we are expecting about 60 tablets per minute to be measured. Currently, we are doing manual feeding. Hence, we, we are able to measure about 10 tablets per minute. So in order to demonstrate how we can use the Terasov to track uh, the properties of tablets based on a process parameter, we compacted flat face 
tablets, about 1,000 of them, using the Kosh SM12 machine. So we use 50, 100, and 200 megapascal, and then 10, and then 30 RPM. So this in all gave us six batches. And under each batch, we made 1,000 tablets. In all, 6,000 tablets were compacted. Out of the 1,000 tablets per batch, currently we've been able to measure 250 tablets. So in all, we've measured 1,005 tablets. And these are the data I'm going to talk about. In order to predict the disintegration, we selected 12 tablets from each batch and did standard disintegration testing using the DT50 disintegration tester by Sotax. So this is the results. As you can see, the measured porosity and all the 1,005 tablets. And by just visual observation, we can clearly see that the porosity changes based on the compaction parameter. Here, we are using about 25 minutes to measure one batch. And if you remember, one batch contains 250 tablets. So this is a frequency distribution of the measured porosity. And here you can also clearly see the differences. And also you can see how uniformly they are distributed. So we did some normality testing. And here you can see that most of these batches can be assumed as normally distributed, except the one compressed with 30 and then 200 megapascal. So further analysis was done using other testing method, which does not take into consideration population which are normally distributed. So here you can see the 95 confidence interval of the standard deviation. And as you can see, the bootstrap method does not consider normal distribution. However, you can see that there's no significant changes between the 95% confidence interval. So meaning we can assume all the population as being normally distributed. Also, by considering the graph, you can also see that the width of the distribution decreases as pressure increases. And similarly, the width decreases as the speed is reduced. So when you compare, for example, the 200 megapascal, you can see that the first one was compressed with 10 RPM and this was compressed with 30 RPM. And you can see the width. So you can see that the speed also affects the spread of the distribution. Similarly, we plotted the 95 confident interval for the mean. And here you can clearly see that there is no overlap between the confident intervals, which also clearly shows that the speed and compaction pressure has significant influence on the porosity. So we went ahead to do the two-way ANOVA analysis, and unsurprisingly, it has also buttressed our previous observations that pressure, speed, and their interaction significantly affects the porosity. But as I told you, our target is not only on the porosity, but our target is to use this porosity to predict the disintegration of all the major 1,005 tablets. So 12 of these tablets were selected from each batch, and then uh, their disintegration time were measured. So here is a correlation between the disintegration time and the porosity. And here one might be thinking why we are using polynomial curve fitting. It is a known fact that at very high porosity levels, the disintegration time rises again. Although these data don't seem to display this, however, we have other published data whereby we've seen clearly that at very high porosity levels, the disintegration time increases. And this might be because at that high porosity level, factors such as swelling, possible gel formation, and surface properties take over. So from the correlation, we predicted the disintegration of all the 1,005 tablets. 
And here, clearly, by visually observing, you can see that the disintegration time changes based on the compaction parameters. By considering this box plot, we can clearly see that pressure and speed have significant impact. However, the one, the batches that were compacted with the higher speed tends to have more outliers. So you can see, so when you consider this, we have 200, 200 megapascal, and then we have 10 and then 30 megapascal. And here we have only one outlier, and here we have about four outliers. The same thing applies here. We have only about two and about three. So you can see that the speed does not only decrease the disintegration time, but also there are a lot of inconsistencies in the properties of the compacted tablets. And this makes sense because you can imagine that when you are compacting the, the tablet with a maximum speed, the probability that some of them might not be well compacted is high. Hence, there will be a lot of outliers. So here, as we can see in this graph, the data for the disintegration for the batches compacted under high pressure tends to be normally distributed. However, those compacted with very low pressures are not normally distributed. And this is not surprising because you can imagine that, that when you are trying to compact tablets with these very high porosities, then there will be a lot of inconsistencies. So we went ahead to do the normality testing using the contact contact plus. And once again, the ones compacted with low pressure shows that they are not normally distributed, which is consistent. So in the next analysis, we are going to ignore the ones which are not normally distributed and now focus on the ones which are normally distributed. So this is a two-way ANOVA analysis and again, it shows the significant impact of pressure and speed by considering the p-values on the disintegration time of the tablets. However, the interactions are not so significant. We can think about this as being the fact that at such higher pressures, both the interaction with the pressure and the speed, the pressure tends to maybe dominate, the effect of the pressure tends to not dominate the speed. And for that matter, the interaction are no more significant. So in summary, we've developed a method, and this method can non-destructively and quickly measure the porosity and then that is integration time of pharmaceutical tablets. We don't need any chemometrics, as I said, we are directly measuring the porosity. The method is robust, as we've seen here, that changes in the compaction parameters can be seen in the final product, and our method can clearly detect these changes. So this will definitely lead to process understanding and hence the quality of the final product will be assured when we really understand what is happening in the process. So I would want to acknowledge our partners from TerraView, Alessia, GSK, Andrew, and Daniel, Huxley Bertram, Ralph, and this is the TerraHES application group from Cambridge. So you can see us on Twitter, and also to learn more about our research and what we do, and also to know more about this TerraHES method, you can just click on the link and then you'll find a lot of our works. Thank you for your time.